Hello, this is Brother Kromar from the Maths Department of BYU-Idaho, and these videos will be covering inference for several means dealing with the ANOVA procedure. The ANOVA procedure is what's used to, to do inference for several means. And so here's the outline for these videos. First, I'll introduce what ANOVA is, or what's called the analysis of variance. It's short for analysis of variance. Then we'll do, hypothe do the hypothesis testing, and then we'll check the requirements of descriptive statistics. Notice in this outline that we do not cover confidence intervals like we've done in the previous procedures for this unit. We, won't, we will not be doing that. There is no, there is no confidence interval that's comparable to what we do in independent samples or match pairs. Okay. So let's talk about the quantitative procedures that we've covered in this unit. Up to now, we've covered four different quantitative procedures. The one sample one where, uh, and one mean where we either know the population standard deviation or we don't. Okay or two samples where we either have paired samples or we have independent samples. But now we're to this point where now we want to discuss more than two samples. If we have several means we want to compare, well, that's where we introduce ANOVA. Okay, and we'll talk about ANOVA. ANOVA is the analysis of variance that compares sample means. So why in the world is it called analysis of variance when we're comparing sample means? Well, ANOVA compares the variation between each of the sample means and the variation within each of the samples. So ANOVA tests whether several populations have the same mean by comparing how far apart the sample means are with how much variation there is within the samples. So here's a, here's a simple example of this where, say, for instance, we take group 1, which is represented by X, and group 2 represented by O. And say, for instance, the results come in, like say, here's the minimum number, here's the max number. The results come in for the X's that are, that are bunched up like right here, and for the O's are bunched up over here. Now, because the difference of the variation between the samples is larger than the variation within the samples, that would mean that it appears that the means are different. Okay? This is what's stated here in the sense. Variance between samples is larger than the variation within the samples, so the means appear to be different. However, if we have something like this where the X's and the O's are kind of meshed together, it appears the variation between the samples is similar to the variation within samples, so the means appear to be similar, or at least if there are differences, it's indistinguishable, you can't tell. So this goes back to this part here where ANOVA compares the variation between each of the sample means and the variation within each of the samples. Okay. So now let's let's talk about what we or what we use to um, to deal with ANOVA and the testing for inference for several means. It's what's called the F distribution. We talked about the Z distribution and the T distribution. In this class, but now we'll talk about the F distribution, which is different than what you've seen before. And here's a short summary of what the F distribution is. First of all, as you see down here on this on this image, it is a right skew distribution. Okay, the F values are never negative. If you look here down below, it starts at zero and then it's all positive. And then the F and then the P value for the ANOVA test is the area in the right tail. We never divide the area in the tail. So where what we did back in it with with the t tests or or with a z score, we would we could do a one-sided or a two-sided test, but here it's always a right tail or right-sided test. We're always going to shape it right. Okay. So now the analysis of variance to, uh, s statistics. So we've we've had the, the z score and we've had the, the t statistic, which is uh, the one sample t paired sample t test and independent sample t test. But now we have a new test statistic, which is the f statistic. And the F is the, the formula for it, the basic formula is the variation among the sample means divided by the variation among the individuals in the same sample. So similar to other test statistics, the Z score and the test statistic, uh, or the T statistic, as F gets further away from zero, the greater likelihood that the value becomes an unusual result. Okay? So here's an example of what's called an ANOVA table. And there are there are four basic levels of understanding that you should know about an ANOVA table. First of all, with this first row, this is the row that represents the variation among sample means. Okay? The second row, so this is, so variation among sample means is the between group, and these numbers here represent the sum, sum of squares and mean square are measures of, vari of variability. Okay? Variation among the individuals in the sample, that's the second group, okay, within group. And there's also measures of variability here, and you also see what I didn't mention a little bit ago is degrees of freedom. There's also degrees of freedom here. And you'll be asked to list 
least two degrees of freedom for your analysis. The first one, the second one, two, and 111 in this example. The third thing about this table is, is that this is the F statistic. Okay, This is where you get the F statistic. And, and where you get that is you take this measure of variability divided by this measure of variability, so the between group variability divided by the within group variability to get the F statistic. Okay, And this looks like, with, with an F test statistic of 4.512, that may be significant, but the way to tell ultimately is to look at this last number, which is the p-value. Okay? And so since, if say, if alpha is equal to 0.05, then we would, uh, and this is our p-value, we would reject the null hypothesis. And that's the last thing about this table. So one, so we're reviewing again for an open table. The first row represents uh, variability among sample means. The second row is variation, represents the uh, numbers of, that deal with variation among individuals in the same sample. Number three, here's your F statistic, where it's the ratio of these two numbers. And number four, this here is the P value. Okay. And you check that with your level significance. All right, so now let's talk about hypothesis testing. So I'm going to review what we did in the last lesson with the gen independent samples, these six steps. Step one is state the null and alternative hypotheses. With independent samples, the null is, is that the population mean from the first group is equal to the population mean of the second group. The alternative is three possibilities. It's either that it's not equal to, it's greater than, or it's less than, depending on the test. In this case, it's a two-sided test. We just want to see if there's a difference between the two population means. Or it's a one-sided test. We want to see if it's one sample mean is greater than or less than the other. The test statistic is computed using software. Uh, here's the formula for it, but you'll be using either SPSS or Excel. We also get degrees of freedom and the p-value from software as well. Now, with the next step, after we get the p-value, we, if uh, we compare the p-value to level significance, and so we reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than the level significance. If not, then we don't reject. And then we state our conclusions. If we reject the null, we reject the null hypothesis, we have sufficient evidence to say that, and then we state the alternative conclusion. If we don't reject the null hypothesis, we have insufficient evidence. Okay? So now, let's go to the steps for ANOVA. It's six, six steps like it is for independent samples, but there's some differences here. Step one is state the null and alternative hypothesis. How we state the null is that the null is that all the means are equal. Okay? That's the null hypothesis. So when we write it out in English, I'm like what you see in the previous slide where we, where we use symbols. The alternative hypothesis is one or more of the means differ than the others. Okay, that's the alternative hypothesis. Steps two through four is just like the other, like the previous or the independent samples where you compute a test statistic degrees of freedom of p-value using software. But now we'll be using the F test statistic. We get the degrees of freedom, and now we have two numbers, the numerator, what's called the numerator, and the denominator degrees of freedom, and we get a p-value. I'll show you uh, an example of this in just a second. And then the last two steps are the same. With the second to last step, if we reject the null, if the p-value is less than the level significance, if not, we don't reject. And then we state our conclusions referring to the alternative hypothesis. Okay? So now what I'd like to do is go through an example. This is kind of a long example here. So this was from the online textbook. So Robert Emmons and Michael McCullough investigate the effects of gratitude on people's perceptions of life as a whole. In a study of N equal to 192 undergraduates, people randomly assigned one of the three groups. Now, in the reading, it talked about group one was gratitude, that they were to list five things each week which they were grateful for or thankful. Group two is the hassles, what are the five irritants that occurred? And group three, the events, just list the events that happened in their, in, during the past week that, that had an impact on them. In addition to the weekly record of five things they recorded, the level of satisfaction in life in general, higher values are more favorable. Reports were collected for nine weeks. And the overall level of satisfaction with life as a whole is recorded with for each individual. Research wanted to determine if there was a difference in the perception of life as a whole between the subjects assigned to each of the three groups. Stated differently, they wanted to determine if expressing gratitude affected the person's view of life in general. They used a level of significance of 0.05. So step one is state the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is that all the means are equal. And the alternative is one or more of the means different than the others. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video because I'm at the 10-minute point. But I'll continue with this problem and I'll, I'll go through a second example as well. 